You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 142 of The Daily Beaver here on the Cryer Media Network. Today, recording day is Thursday, June 15th, 2023, and though it is currently gray here at the Beaver Lodge, sun is expected after a few days of rain. I'm your host, the eager beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, eh? and with me as always is my dear friend, Mr. Grizzly. Of course, a big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a Thursday morning nibble for you, and before we start, let's ask Mr. Grizzly, how you feeling? How's your mental health today, sir? Well, good morning, Mr. Beaver. Uh, I'm feeling like I got run over by a truck. Ooh. <laughs> well, I was up later than normal last night. Um, it wing night, so we went over to the pub. Uh, Bridget and I went over to the pub and bumped into some old buddies. So we sat and chatted for a while. Uh, it, but it wasn't it wasn't excessive alcohol consumption or anything like that. It was just late late on a school night, and uh, that makes you tired, you know, because you're yes. not used to it. So yeah, no, it was good. It was good to see some old buddies last night, and uh, we had a nice chat. Yeah, yeah, it was great. So you know, mental health wise, I think I'm doing pretty good. I feel I'm, I'm pretty happy. Just uh, you know, not fully there as a human being yet because I've not been up long enough and uh, I'm tired. <laughs> mm, mm. I was sending some uh, thoughts out to to Kit Sadeka, who has a bit of a cold. So we hope that you feel oh. better soon. And uh, Kit Linda, my cat gets all excited and up in the computer screen every time she hears Douglas's voice in the intro every damn morning. Cool. Hey, kitty, kitty, kitty. How you doing? <laughs> we like beaver kitties. <laughs> we like beaver pets. Um, what, all what, right. what's, what's Miss Kitty's name? I need to know so I can say it. Yes, yes, we have to absolutely <laughs> know that. Um, there's lots of news um, because there's been lots of developments. Um, if you're watching, as you can see, I didn't get all the stage makeup off my eyes either. <laughs> you're up late. Oh, yeah, he got, he got a bit of a raccoon going on on the left. Yeah, yeah. Try as I might, I that's the part I always have the most trouble with getting the makeup off. Mm. Um, all right. Uh, so there are developments in all kinds of places. There are developments about uh, the Volkswagen plant. There are developments on the Paul Bernardo file. There are developments on the uh, election interference file. 
uh, there's a lot going on. Um, so let's start with, um, oh, also, uh, Bonnie Crombie has officially entered the race for the Ontario uh, leadership, uh, liberal, leadership of the Ontario Liberal Party. Uh, so that party is clearly not dead yet uh, of the Ontario Party for MP and for um, Ted Sue, who is uh, one of the only people in the party who was able to flip a seat towards the liberals during the last election. We have Nate Erskine Smith, who is uh, very well known and more on the activist side. And uh, now with Bonnie Crombie, that makes four. Um, she has been slightly walking back uh, her, there's a need for center right alternative comment that uh, she mentioned in the, when she was exploring the idea. Um, now the rhetoric seems to be Ontarians don't think in left or right terms most people are in the center. So I'm thinking that maybe someone tapped her on the shoulder and said, uh, that's probably not your winning lane. Um, yeah. Doug Ford is pretending to not be bothered at all. Has he gone to the cottage for the summer? <laughs> Who knows where he's gone yet? I'll be on that. I'll be on the phone 24 seven. The phone is the name of his sea do. Yes. Um, so yeah, he's been, uh, basically sort of like laughing it off. <laughs> I'm not worried, but, uh, you can tell he's worried. And the reason for which he's worried is that, uh, well, he thinks he has the 905 locked up and well, she's a popular 905 politician. Yeah. could, could, uh, could swing things a bit. It could swing things just a little bit. Um, also with regard to this, um, it seems that she has a higher favorability rating than Ford, uh, is the front runner, front runner in the race in terms of name recognition. Uh, she is, a lot of people forget it, uh, but she is a former MP, so she does have, um, parliamentary experience. Yeah. And, uh, things are a little different this time because this is the first time that the Ontario Liberal Leadership Convention will not be delegated, but a one member, one vote race. So... We don't, uh, which could uh, end up benefiting Nakfi in a way, because since he was once president of the party in all those electoral districts where you need to get the highest number of votes to get those 100 points, um, he might already have all the contacts there based from that day, those days. Mm. Uh, so it could be a very, 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 very interesting race. So that has happened, but uh, with four uh, relatively big names, uh, for a party that doesn't have official status, um, it seems that it's there. There's still life in the uh, still life in the old party yet, <laughs> as they say. Um, in other news, uh, with regards, I have oh, I have something for you. Sure thing. I have something for you that um, I don't know if you saw this. This is this is interesting to say the least. Um, it's uh, it, it's a video clip. It's a two minute video clip. I'll show it in just a second. I just want to give you a precursor. It's from somebody who is got a lot of mental health issues. Okay, well documented uh, individual with um, a past of alcohol abuse, and uh, we'll leave it at that. Okay. It's, it's a video clip of Jeremy, Jeremy McKenzie hmm. eating his own. Okay. I'll play this. It's two minutes, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Just give me a sec while I, I line it up here. And here we go. Uh, this will be a shocker, I think, for a lot of people. Uh, it's this, I think this man may be sober. Most Canadians are fucking losers. Like, it's a loser country full of weak, soft, pathetic people. <laughs> just, sorry, that's, that's what it is, man. That's what, that's, prove me wrong. You know? I can't. Where, where's the lie, right? Yeah, I can't. Because that is what it is. He's right. It's, ho it's a hobby. We're going to go scream at empty buildings. And because I, and a lot of these people, they don't fit anywhere else. That's why they're there. Like the, these, the, the, the freedom people. Yeah. That, oh. that's, that's why they're there because they have nowhere else to go. They don't have any jobs, they don't have any families, they don't have any social circles. And they're losers that found, uh, you know, kind of a niche where 
um, this was a place that took everybody because it, at the time, you know, when this kind of came down on everybody, everybody, it was like the more the merrier the numbers, right? And it's just kind of attracted all these, uh, you know, vagrants and you know, politically homeless people who don't really believe it. They're just a train. A lot of them are drug addicts and alcoholics and they just want to party and fuck around. And that's a lot of it. That's most of it. And that, that cast, I mean, that was why I had a hard time being embraced by a lot of like the wider public because they go out and see what these people are about. And it's a bunch of people shirtless, smoking cigarettes, half in the bag, hammered, screaming about the world. Like, and like stuff that they don't understand. They just look crazy and insane. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like, okay, you're some dad that works at a, you know, a software company, and okay, well, here's a guy who's half shit faced in the bag who looks like an extra from Sons of Anarchy. And he's screaming at me about how Bill Gates is putting microchips in vaccines. And I'm going to walk away pretty quickly from that. And that's, you know, and, and that's what's left now. Everybody else has kind of gone on with their lives. I mean, I'm still doing what I was doing before, and other people are. And there's this collection of uh, lost people with nothing to do who are just still, you know, stuck in this weird kind of endless cycle of protesting nothing. They don't even really know what they're angry about or they and, they and what do they want they don't know free yeah, all, whatever that changed. means let me do whatever i want all the time for free is what it means i guess yeah sober second thought uh it makes me question has the man found sobriety i don't know i mean look he still is a very problematic individual i mean he's got his diagonal flag in the background there he 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 has he has mental health issues that need to be dealt with no question but it's like they're eating their own now yeah but 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 what he said i mean other than him going off about you know canadians being losers which go to hell but uh what he said about that crew it's not inaccurate no it's the same it's not inaccurate at all and cults you need a place to belong. Come on, we'll be your family. But meanwhile, that's exactly. Meanwhile, when they're alone in their dens, only amongst themselves, this is what they say about you. Mm-hmm. Except he didn't. He said this on his podcast. Yeah, yeah he's saying it's podcast. So, but it's, but it's the, like these people talk too much. That's the problem. Pierre Oliver learned right yeah. when they started talking about his wife. Yeah, they're just using them too. Oh yeah. Like the guy, the guy has a lot of mental health issues. Uh, he's he's a hateful racist. I'm not I'm not giving him a Paul no. a, a, a pass on anything. But all those people he was talking about, these mm-hmm. are people that he's knowingly using. Yeah, we can get these people to come to our our thing, and when you're doing an occupation, it's the bodies that matter. You don't care why they're there. No, you don't care if they're true believers. You don't care if they're. They're sitting in some den rationally playing 3D chest. 3D chess, not chest. 3D chess. <laughs> that's, <laughs> 3D a different, chess that's a different world. sport altogether. Right. So, I mean, you just care that people show up and cause chaos. Yeah. Well, he's it an doesn't agent matter to you of why chaos. they're there. But this is what he thinks of them. Yeah. So I wonder, you know, will, will like, that's going to blow back on him which, hey, whatever, you know, I, you reap what you sow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's going to blow back on him. I don't know what's going to happen. They're, they're just going to disintegrate. I mean, their, their whole movement, which is a bowel movement, if you ask me, is petered out to almost nothing. What, what are they protesting now? What, there are no more mandates. There haven't been for a long time. Well, they're time. protesting what, they're really pro- what they were really protesting all along. Yes. Yeah. They just hate the government. Well, th- that's that, and, and, right? People were asking, F-Y-M-M, what does that mean? Fuck you, make me. F-U, yeah, F-U, make me, yeah. Yeah. There you go. So <laughs> I, th- I thought that was I thought that was uh, an interesting video clip, and I thought we, we could share it so that people could see that, look, they, they're, this is not a group of good people. They will use you, abuse you, and toss you aside. They will use you to, to, to step up the rung of the ladder, and stomp on you in the process. They don't care. No. They don't care. No. You're the first to go. Yeah. Well, I mean, the useful idiots Skippy, are the first to go. Skippy used them until they, you know, uh, uh, verbally assaulted his wife or, or spoke about 
committing sexual assault on his wife. And then uh, all of a sudden, he wanted them to go to jail. It was, did you notice how he got arrested like two days later? Mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. He got arrested real fast. Mm -hmm. Like, so all the other crimes he committed up to that point was getting a pass on. But as soon as Skippy, you know, Mr. Tough Guy. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm, right. just, I'm, just, I'm just asking questions. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. Oh, man. On um, the public inquiry front, um, the government now has Dominic Leblanc, the Intergovernmental Affairs Minister, as the point person on this. Why they did not have him there from the get-go, I do not understand. Uh, they seem to be doing it the way that most people would have expected them to do it the first time now, which is making me wonder again, uh, was this again just a, one more episode of the liberals tripping over the flowers in the carpet, as they are prone to do? Yeah. Because for some reason, they just can't handle having a lead in the polls. As soon as they get it, they need to blow it, which they've done again. Um, or uh, is this really, again, some uh, rope-a-dope? Because, uh, once again, the Bloc Québécois Conservative Party of Canada coalition is at work. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, both joined together to make sure we didn't get electoral reform, and they both joined together to vote down the budget estimates for the latest budget, and uh, they both got together on this. And now they are collaborating together to try and suggest some names that they would like. Uh, now, the Bloc Québécois has gone first, uh, but they have met with the Conservatives, haven't met with any other party. The Conservatives haven't met with any other party as well. So interesting. And uh, the Black Québécois has made some suggestions. Uh, for example, they've suggested um, Louise Arbour, former Supreme Court of Canada Justice, and um, uh, again, War Crimes Trib uh, Tribunal Judge. Uh, they've suggested Orwin Kotler, a liberal, very well-known human rights advocate. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, some names that were really, really serious. But um, we have Jagmeet Singh here making a few interesting points about the Bloc Québécois suggestions and how he would like to see the process go. And um, this actually seems quite decent. And you will notice um, how he proposes not every party suggesting their own names but a little bit of a different way to go about it. All right, so here we go. But I want to be clear about the path forward. The path forward, what I've suggested, is a similar model to what, what, what happens in, in the provincial parliament in Ontario, where we've got each member of, each a, a recognized party has an elected official present in a committee that's responsible for selection in Ontario for any officer of the legislature but in this case it would be specifically for the public inquiry, that uh, it would be chaired by, uh, by the speaker. In the case of Ontario, it could be chaired uh, a non-voting member that chairs it. And then uh, we would review the prospective candidates for the position, in this case, the public inquiry. So you've got a representative from each of the parties there reviewing the candidates. The candidates need to be vetted. We need to ensure a couple of criteria that there is no uh, association with for example, the Trudeau Foundation, given the allegations around foreign interference there, uh, that it's a judge or someone that's a retired judge and someone that is not donated to a political party in a, in a recent period of time, just to ensure that there's no appearance of bias. Those are some of the basic criteria. There'd be a vetting process, and then we select the, the opposition, or we select the, uh, the person that's going to run the public inquiry together. This process is one where we're all in the same room and we're making decisions together. Uh, and finally, to set the, uh, what the parameters of the public inquiry, that's also something we should be do doing together. It shouldn't be the case that each uh, opposition leader sends a separate set of demands and then the government receives that and says, oh, there's no consensus. That's not the way to do this. What we want is everyone sitting together, working together, and then delivering a process that works. Okay, so you've outlined your criteria again, how you want this process to work. Now, we have heard the Bloc Québécois put forward some specific names like Louise Arbour and Erwin Kotler. Uh, do you have any specific names right now? 
Well, good, good point. So um, the, the bloc put forward a name, Louis Arbour. Uh, they were strongly critical of Mr. Johnson for his connections to the Trudeau Foundation. On one Google search of uh, Justice uh, Arbour's name and the Trudeau Foundation founds, finds one Google search that she's actually also has some connections to the foundation. So the name that the block provided has the exact same critique that they've had against Mr. Johnson, which is illustrative of why we don't want to just throw out names. We want a process in place. And the process has to satisfy certain criteria so we don't end up in the kind of embarrassing situation the block is in. Their major critique of Mr. Johnson is now being replicated in the name that they've suggested themselves. And that's something that's not helpful in this process. So we, what we want to do is have a process of cri a criteria and then a vetting process of people that can satisfy that criteria. And then as, a, as a all elected, all, rep all official parties, uh, as consensus on selecting the, the candidate uh, to avoid that kind of embarrassing mistake that the bloc has just made. Oh. Interesting commentary. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the associations with Trudeau. Even Justice Louise Arbour, who was good enough to be brought in to clean up the military, mm -hmm. would not be considered impartial enough for this. War Crimes Tribunal judge would not be. Because <sighs> she once, just... once was within 35 kilometers of the Trudeau Foundation. And this is the block. Well, point of power, we can't have this. Suggesting a name that has yeah. the exact. So they didn't do any research. They said, oh, well, Louise Arbor sounds good, or when Cotler sounds good, who are people that like sound, you know, that nobody could object to? Which is the exact same process the liberals did when they picked David Johnston. Mm hmm. I think I still think Kim Campbell would be the ideal choice. I, I, I think she's also too smart to not bother getting in. She'd be like, no, nope. I don't think she wants to be within 100 kilometers of that thing. Well, now they're talking like it may not even be one person because they're already thinking they might not be agree. It might be a panel. Yeah. So everybody gets their person in. They're not even, they made all this stink. And then they said, hey, how about these names? And didn't do a search to see if they had association with the true Duffy. You'd think that the first thing they would do, if any name. Put it in the Googler. Let's go into the Trudeau Foundation and let's look at all the alumni. All these people are out. But no, because it's not about that. Is it? Nope. No. The only thing that pisses me off about this is that it's the Bloc Québécois that went first because if PP would have come out and said, how about Louise Arbour? Oh, man, that would have been too sweet. But that was PP using the Bloc. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. You go first. We'll, we'll, we'll be right out. Oh, oh, so that happened. Okay. Hey, gee, thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, sipping Thank the, uh, the cup you. of wine before we did. Thank you, personal taster Yves-François Blanchet. <laughs> A <laughs> fucking loser that man is. And, and and of course, during that whole thing where he was making that, of course, it was full of xenophobic statements. Of course. Of Steve course Nash it was. was doing that. Of course it was. <sighs> that man, I, I, I swear, that man, he's got the easiest job in Parliament. All he has to say, oh, well, yeah, the Quebec Assembly voted for this, we're for this too. And then he just rides on the coattails. <laughs> and until either the leader or the party does something really, really stupid, like happened a few years ago when they decided to take a turn to the right to see how that would work out with them, with Pierre Calpelladou, um, they get their 35 to 40, 40, 50 seats. Just by saying, yeah, us too. That's all they got to do. <sighs> and they got a little petulant, pompous, Bigot leading the party. Anyway, sorry. Anyway. As kids may or may not know, I have a personal issue with Yves Francois Blanchet because yeah, yeah. he has been racist towards me, specifically in public. So I do not like that man. Good my to have a Pretty much everything I have to say about him is colored by that. Oh, did I say colored? Sorry. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs>
<laughs> Oopsie. Oh, somebody flipped my switch to bitch. Yeah, bitch. Anyway, <laughs> but that clip tells you, no, it's a game to these people. Yeah. The, 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 Not a game for Mr. Singh. He's actually come up with a thoughtful way forward. But well, it's because he, he loves this country. And uh, period. He loves this country. It's obvious. Uh, Skippy doesn't give a damn. He cares about two things. Money and power. That's it. That's all he cares about. Spent evidence. To, there's so much evidence to go around to, to, to corroborate my theory. It's not even a theory. It's a s simple statement of fact. Yep. And Mr. Singh loves this country. Oh, yeah. Yep. And he wants, he wants, well, he, who, who asked for, let's take a look at all foreign interference, Mr. Singh. Yep, twice. Right? Twice. First no, no, time, we, we just want to investigate Beijing interference. Yep. The first time conservatives voted against it, I believe so, and then the second time they voted for it. Yeah. <sighs> I tell you, man. Oh, we have the kits there. Oh, Petty is a nice color on you, dear queen. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Kitty Lane. <laughs> Kit Kendra. Now that's a new name for us. Kit Kendra, welcome to the Beaver Lodge. Love welcome, it. Welcome, welcome to, to the party, Kendra. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, PCS, Blue Wool runs deep with Eve. Indeed, yes. Uh, as uh, I think the comment that I heard is that his uh, speech was very xenophobic and uh, full of pure Lenisms. Oh. <laughs> that can't be good. Yeah. Uh, which I tell you, man. Jeez. Um, there's also um, some stuff about Marco Mendocino. This guy, there's rumors that there's a shuffle coming. This guy's got to go. He's just, he just keeps tripping over it. And I have to say, now I'm, Ugh, I'm agreeing with Pierre Polliver. It, it, broken clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Try not to throw up in your mouth. <laughs> Sorry. But he's right for the wrong reasons. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> but he's right. Uh, it has come out, uh, Mendocino, who said that all oh, the police stations had been taken care of, and turns out they hadn't. Uh, the RCMP now says that uh, seven or eight have been addressed, but uh, the ones in Montreal in particular are issues because there may have been some Canadians who have been coerced into helping, and therefore that one might be a little more complicated. Right. Uh, but there's a whole other issue with him, and he's been tripping You know, during the public order emergency inquiry. It turns out that he had said that you know, the police had asked for this and the police didn't specifically ask for that, not in those words, let's put it that way. And there was no request formal in those words. Well, now the latest one is the Paul Bernardo uh, move from maximum to medium security prison, where the line has been that nobody knew about it uh, beforehand. Well, it turns out that that's not exactly true. Uh, it appears that uh, the office of Mendocino uh, knew three months before the transfer. Uh, Correctional Service Canada first emailed the office on March 2nd saying that Bernardo would be moved, but no date was finalized at that time. Now, I can understand in one way staffers uh, saying, okay, well, we don't have a date. We're not going to say anything yet. We, you know, we just put a pin in that and wait for the dates to come. Um, I also heard the comment, well, maybe these were all young staffers because there are young staffers and the Bernardo things over mm -hmm. 30 years old. And, you know, it just, they didn't have the cultural reference and didn't think it was all that important because the name meant not just another them. inmate. Uh, it turns that. out that that yeah. is not the case. So it turns no. out it wasn't a case of young staffers. Um, so why it is they said nothing Nothing at all. But on May 25th, about four days before the transfer, they received one and said that he would be transferred in four days. And they still did not inform the minister then. They say they say they did not inform the minister until the day after Bernardo was transferred. Uh, they say that they were working on examining other options and looked into authorities available to the minister to be able to take action to prevent that, but learned 
that the office has no powers over transfer decisions, which I'm kind of surprised they had to research that because that's pretty much civics 101. Mm-hmm. That's like when Daniel Smith was saying, you know, I, I had to ask Rob Anderson whether or not we had the power. Like, you shouldn't have to ask that question. That's pretty obvious. If, you, if you've met Canada and you've lived here for X number of years, you know yeah. this. So um, I do not know why uh, that happened. Um, Mendocino did not speak publicly about the transfer of the call uh, or call the commissioner in charge until Correctional Service of Canada made the news public, and it would have been a breach of privacy laws for him to speak of it any earlier. Of course, that puts the communications optics situation of caring more about the privacy of Bernardo than... Yeah. This, which, hey, that's the law and it creates strict, sticky, sticky situations. But mm-hmm. we're in a situation where we're talking about making the rules based on the exception. Right? Paul Bernardo is exceptionally bad person. Yes. <laughs> right? And you don't try to make common rules mm-hmm. based on the exceptions, you don't try to make new law on a bad case. Right? because the end result's never all that good. Um, Tim Danson, who's the lawyer representing uh, the families, says that it's unacceptable that the minister was kept in the dark for 89 days, and if that's true, staff kept that secret from their boss, then it's an egregious abdication of responsibility. This is exactly the kind of information that must be communicated to the minister because the buck stops with him, and this is one of the most high-profile cases in this country's history and should have been raised directly with the minister earlier. As a public relations guy, that would have been my thought as well. Two words you never want to hear when you're in politics. Minister vulnerable. If you do not tell the minister that one of Canada's most notorious serial killers is going to be changed from maximum to minimum security, anytime anything's mentioned, every time his like parole thing comes up X number of years or whatnot, which is by law it has to, and everybody freaks out. Oh my God, I can't believe. And there's no way he's ever going to get parole, but everybody freaks out and everybody you know, tries to score the political points and tries to fear conquer that it might happen. He might get released this time. Nope. Um, yeah. So this is the same thing that's kind of going on here. Um, but you know that's going to happen as soon as you say, say, you say Bernardo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the ears in the nation go, Whoa. So why you wouldn't tell? Why? <sighs> minister vulnerable. You never leave a minister in that position. So whoever was on a staff who did that, if this is indeed true, um, is a thing. Now, it seems that the Prime Minister's office also knew they were alerted in March about the possibility of a transfer and request for inf- and the Prime Minister's office sent a request for information to Mendocino's office. Because that's usually what happens, right? Something comes to the Prime Minister's office and then you get a request for information and all the various departments that have to put, do some information put it back up and then the briefing note is written from that, from all everything that comes up from the bottom. Um, So that has gone out, whether or not the request for information was acted upon is still not clear. Uh, Usually those things come in files and those files have certain colors. And I'm sure if there's a file on Bernardo, it probably had like a bright red. (laughs) I would uh, think there'd be a little sticker to indicate that. Sticker thing like, like, you really need to see this one now. Please look, look at this one first. Um, so again, no word on that. Uh, yeah. Now Mendocino has taken action. He said that he's issued a statement. Uh, well, first his staff said that he would address reporters' questions, and then Mendocino didn't do that. He issued a statement instead on Wednesday usually not a good sign, uh, said that he's directing the Correctional Service of Canada to inform victims' families when an inmate is transferred out of maximum security prison and to inform directly when it plans to transfer a high-profile or dangerous offender. And uh, Danson, the lawyer for the families, did uh, speak about this with Mendocino on Wednesday. Now, the Prime Minister's office also didn't tell the Prime Minister about Bernardo's transfer until the day before it happened or the day on the day it happened or the day before. So the prime minister knew about a day before Mendocino claims that he knew. Mm. Now, all of these stories are consistent, right? 
Mendocino didn't know. The prime minister didn't know until that time when you're asking about all the other stuff uh, with regards to uh, the Chinese interference about Michael Chong. They didn't let them know. They didn't let them know. Um, it seems to be standard operating procedure that a lot of people are saying, unless this is like really, ah, we don't, we're not going to bother them with that, which that probably needs to change. However, interesting enough, when you look back at the foreign interference file, it seems that um, Bill Blair said that he was not alerted to the Michael Chong stuff. Mm. But Alain Vigneault says that he had sent something specifically to Blair <laughs> and said, you need to act on this. So we have contradicting stories here Yeah, on that one, which doesn't help on this one. No. Because if they were all consistent all the way throughout, and the main line always is, that information didn't get up. That information was not flagged. That information. In this particular case with Bernardo, it seems that it was. And if it was flagged, and it's happening concurrently at the same time in the news as the other one, um, it may be very well, may very well be that the foreign interference stuff wasn't flagged. Could be, yeah. Yeah. But that the Bernardo is, and that both stories are in the news at the same time, kind of makes it much harder for people to believe that on the foreign interference one, it wasn't flagged. This is not going to help. No, 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 no. <sighs> Man, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. So, yeah, this is about it's to all, get it's all, real It's just all bad. It's all bad. It's just it's, all bad. It's all, all bad. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, how are we doing on time? Uh, we got a little bit. We got a little bit. All right. Um, yeah. So yeah, keep your ears uh, peeled for this kits uh, because this uh, has my uh, public relations guy Spidey senses tingling that uh, there is a hot mess somewhere in here, and it's probably not going to be good for the liberals. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's just it's a bad situation. Uh, and I know a lot of people have, have come out to try and find like, okay, let's, let's see if, we, and look, it, it was handled poorly. Yeah. It was, uh, very poorly. And, and we're, you know, we're always facts first here, right? It was handled poorly. And we're not period. partisan. We're not being partisan uh, about this. It was. Somebody screwed the pooch and dropped the ball. Probably yeah. simultaneously here. Yeah. And it's not a good look. No, no, it's not. It's really not good. And, you know, the original sort of uh, possible explanation of, well, maybe they didn't, you know, because of their age and, and their, 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 you know, they didn't know the cultural and blah, blah. And it turns out that's not the case. It's like, oops. Yeah. That you can't apologize for this because they, they screwed the pooch. They screwed the pooch. Yeah, about the best that they can do at the moment is to try to take uh corrective measures and put things in place for the future and point to that. Uh, don't talk mm -hmm. about the mistake we made. Talk about the, the changes that we're making now. Uh, that's about the only spin avenue that's available because this is bad. This yeah, is bad. there's, there's, yeah. yeah, this is, we need to hire a navigator bad. Don't hire a navigator. Yeah, don't hire a navigator. <laughs> but that's how bad it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, you, you screwed up, man. Yeah. You did. He, Mar Mendocino's got to go. He just, he's got to go. Every time we mention him, there's something. You know, he, he's had his three strikes as far as I'm concerned. He's had like five or six. A while now. ago. That's what I mean. He, a while ago. Yeah. It, dude, backbench. Yeah. He's not a star. I, I don't know what he's like as a person, uh, but he, he's just, he's, he seems to be very incapable of handling any file given to him. Yep. And he's in a pretty major portfolio. Yeah. Well, look, I'm going to say this because I think it really does apply. Uh, he is an old white man who continues to fail up. Yep. I mean, tell me I'm wrong. I cannot. Uh, I don't think you can tell me. I don't, I don't think you can tell me I'm wrong. Yep. No, he, look, he's the minister of public safety. We've had the convoy. Yeah. We have Bernardo's transfer. And we have foreign intimidation along with clandestine police stations. Dude, 
And he hasn't been stellar on these three points at all. Nope. And clearly there's something with our intelligence agencies and the way that information gets communicated. We found that out with the convoy. We're finding that out with Bernard. Well, Bernardo is probably not the intelligence communities, but Correctional Service Canada. But anything that's sensitive with regard to application of the law, enforcement of the law, it just seems that there are so many that, that are probably a good idea in theory. You know, ways to keep some distance between the minister and you know and the actual operation of things because the minister is not supposed to direct operations. Um, right. But when we're You've got so much, so many of these levels of distance that um, a transfer to medium security of one of Canada's most notorious serial killers isn't judged important enough to make it to the desk. When we got a situation where the commissioner of the RCMP says, in the case of a occupation, "Oh well, I have this other plan here," but decides not to speak up to volunteer it. Allegedly, assuming yeah. there was a plan here, which is. Facts are, that fact is not in evidence either. Um, when you have a situation where MPs are being targeted, now, of course, in terms of intelligence, you know, that threat was probably assessed and deemed to be, oh, well, you know, yeah, this is just business as usual for the PRC and, you know, whatever. Um, but during an election, you might want to move that up bit i'm just there's clearly some changes that need to be made there and that portion that uh f- former special repertoire former governor general david johnston rec- recommended about having some pl- public hearings on how that information is handled and disseminated and moved up and down the system within our intelligence communities and our law enforcement communities um and our national security apparatus is probably a good idea because we keep on making we keep on coming back to these same problems all the time. It always seems yeah. to end up there. Something wasn't communicated. Something didn't go up. Uh, there was a turf war and two divisions decided not to share information instead so that they could be there for or whatever it is. He's got to go. He's got to go. He's, He's got to go. go. It just, it just, it, bro, you don't have it. You don't, yeah. you don't got it, man. Yeah. You got to go. Yep. And like uh, James says here again, the worst was when Correctional Services Canada cited Bernardo's privacy rights as part of the decision-making process. We mentioned that, yep. This, now he does legally have privacy rights. Yes. But again, the former spin doctor says, uh, you generally don't put those up first. Now, I know that they're probably the thinking from people who are not maybe sensitive to this issue as well. He's the one who's still alive, so he's the one whose rights apply. Yeah. But. But. <laughs> big but. When you're talking about it in public. Sir mix a lot, big but. Yes. Like, come on. It seems to me that you would put the emphasis on the rights of the families. When speaking, yes, of course, you have to treat both rights equally and you have to, that's the way the process writes. But when you're speaking about them, do you think you wouldn't say, well, we ought to take care of his privacy rights? <laughs> it would be, well, we really, that's the family. Now we understand that he has some privacy rights. And like, but the family, no, 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 no. It's, you, you, you know, the one, the little, but the primary, mm-hmm. you don't make that the focus of your answer. The one thing in all of this that I've had an issue with is is uh, Skippy always blaming the Prime Minister for every ill in the country. Like, that's all he ever does. Uh, because of Justin Trudeau, houses, the prices of houses has gone up and they charge. 35-year-olds are living in their parents' basements because they can't afford to buy a home. Okay. We'll unpack that in just a second because I am going to swing back to that in just a second. But now he's blaming crime on the Prime Minister. And here's the thing. He's like, he shouldn't be allowed out. Well, I'm not going to argue he shouldn't be allowed out. He's not getting out. He's being transferred. So he's not being released, number one. Number two, the the, the hay that, that Skippy's trying to make with this um, would make him a gatekeeper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? The prime minister does not have and, a hand in this. And interfering directly in the legal system, which I believe they were against when... Yeah. 
SNC had to do it, but not against when yeah. Daniel Smith did it with us. No, 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 so no, that, no, that, no. that too seems to be on a sliding scale. But anyway. It's only okay when we do it, but when yes. you do it, it's bad. But, and here's the thing. It's like the government doesn't direct Corrections Canada. They don't. Which is why it was so surprising to me that the people looked in to see whether or not they could. The staff. You can't. It's like, no, you you cannot direct it. You have to have a hands-off approach to that organization because, constitutionally speaking, the government would be a dictator and we would not be a democracy if they had their hands in every single pie across the country. Mm Mm-hmm. There are different departments that run different things along with, you know, there's provincial responsibilities that Skippy, he, look, he purposely ignores basic civics because he relies upon people to have a, no time to actually learn what's going on. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and, and B, he just wants to win the nanosecond and use uh, I'm going to use the term ignorance here, use the, the, the general public's ignorance, but it's not ignorance because they don't want to learn it. It's they just don't have the they time. They just don't know. They don't know, and they don't have the time to learn the facts, which is why this program that we do is important. You can watch this at your leisure. You can watch the live stream. You can watch it on the replay. You can see us on YouTube. You can listen to us on a multitude of podcast services. We are going to deliver true facts to you all the time. And we need you to understand that the, that the conservatives do not have your interest at heart. Now, now that being said, Marco Mendocino has had a dozen strikes, at least. Guy needs to be removed. He He's needs to be removed, period. He, he blew this one. Again, Prime Minister does not have his hands in, in directing Corrections Canada, but they, they blew this one horribly. If Kit James Gove Medicine's office did give CSC a new directive to formally and directly inform the minister if a dangerous offender is being transferred. Uh, true. Yes. He did do that. And just like national security is that now you must formally and directly inform the public safety minister of an MP and the MP and in question if they're being targeted. Again, why this wasn't, I mean, the only thing I can think of why this wasn't standard is because they received threats and targets so often that that's all they would do. I know in the past past election, if it was Christopher Freeland, it would have been the case because I think 60% of the online hate directed towards women during the the last election all went to her. So, I mean, they would have been handling that full time. So, I, I mean, I can understand why you don't tell everybody about everyone. I... See, that's what I mean. I don't, we don't know how it really works. How many threats do, do we get a year? How many, you know, would, if CIS is doing that, is that all they would be doing? Informing MPs that, you know, here's another threat, here's another threat. How would their offices handle that? So, and, you know, they only warn about like the absolute most, ah, ones. And the fact that, you know, the government of the PRC said, we're watching you <laughs> to see if you got family well. Duh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but if you're in politics, if you're, in, you're, you're a member of a G7 country and you're in politics and you have a minimally Western view of China, shouldn't you just assume you're being watched? <laughs> you're, I, like, I mean, really? You know, it's, like, it's not like China is a, a mystery. They have some set plays of their own. Yeah, one or two, huh? Yeah. So I that's what I mean. It's 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 very confusing and we don't have enough information, right? As Kit Christian says, everyone is watching. Everyone's watching everyone. So it's um yeah. He's uh he he's a liability and he has to go. Um and in that shuffle I would also put Mary Ng. So you gotta go too. And uh there's it's not like there aren't any backbenchers that haven't been showing themselves. Uh, to be worthy. You have Mark Gerritsen, who's been doing a good job. You have Ryan Tumulty, that's been doing a good job. I think you have Jennifer O'Connell lately, who's been doing a good, good job. Um, so there are some people that are gaining oh, some yes. profile from doing their regular work who can uh, who can be promoted up. There, there's, there's no lack of talent, let's just say, on the bench to bring up. So, you know, you've had your turn. You're going to sit the shift out. Could put you on the fourth line for now. 
<laughs> I talks the sports. <laughs> I used fourth line correctly. Yes. <laughs> yes <you did. laughs> Yay. Pat Pat. <laughs> um once in a while, eh? Yeah, yeah, once absolutely. Uh, you let me know how we're doing on time because I got content. Yeah, um, we're going to have to cut it short in a minute or two here. I've got two right. graphics I want to show. Um, one is hypocrisy right here. <laughs> yep. For those listening, it is a political cartoon of um, a water bomber trying to put out wildfires while someone in a biplane with the Conservative Party logo on the tail is flying a banner behind it saying, stop the carbon tax. And then for um, people like, oh, I don't know, <laughs> pro, uh, the, the, the um, Premier of Alberta and, and Theo Fleury, we have a uh, free hat in every box. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Aluminium foil, free hat in every <laughs> box. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's what like when a product that never had like any like sugar in it like this is now sugar free <laughs> yes yeah. free. wait a minute what you don't have sugar <laughs> I, I i saw um, uh, um I, I love I, I, that i bought a a, a box of uh, oatmeal raisin cookies and said uh and, and the big green label on it was um plant-based they're oatmeal. Oat. <laughs> it's in the name. <laughs> oatmeal raisin. Both plants. Raisins were grapes, which were dried in the sun. Of course they're plant-based. But this is what's become of us. If you don't tell people what it is, they don't know. Uh, I literally looked at it and I go, is this shit for real? So I bought them because they were very tasty. And I posted a picture on Twitter like this two years ago, and I still think about it and go. It's like the thing. The reason the aliens don't come here is because we have to put we have to put um, a plant based stamp on a on a on a carton of of mashed potatoes. I think I think I'm beginning to understand directions on shampoo. Lather, rinse, repeat. You know, it's, it's like the it, window shades. Do not drive with window shade in your in place in your windshield. Right. You know the thing with the shampoo though. It's the repeat. Lather, yes. rinse, repeat. Lather, well, they did rinse, that to repeat. sell more product. Lather, rinse, repeat. Isn't this an endless cycle? When do you yes. stop repeating? <laughs> they noticed that it's, sales went that's, up. That's, tremendously. that's just big shampoo trying to get you to empty that bottle. That's all it is. Yeah. Except except for those of us who who literally needed to do it twice i had to lather rinse and repeat it because when i had hair um it oh, would get God. sweaty <laughs> greasy <laughs> yeah, I, and they're like you know some people go i don't wash my hair every day no i had to i had to because i sweat like a demon why do you think i'm so thin at 55 my metabolic rate is ridiculous yep trust me i've seen him in person he's he moves a lot <laughs> <laughs> okay let's let's wrap up let's wrap up i, I gotta get into the office i'm gonna be late that's my uh, fault though that's my uh, fault and this is why we love him <laughs> we love him we loved ourselves some grizz we do well all right tomorrow being friday we'll have lots of time and i'll, I'll do the official stash removal but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna shave it and i'm gonna have i'm gonna leave this bit for like part of the program just a little Ooh. curly bit i'll shave the middle and have part of it for just the curly bit yeah for a little bit i think it'll be funny i'll look like a rat <laughs> the things you do to yourself <laughs> hey man look look at this look 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 this is this is this is um oh nice Ooh, hello a board a yeah. hundred dollars uh, for the uh, Cornerstone Housing for Women. Lovely. Uh, Lovely. So, so yeah, um, I'm going to just give me a sec here and let me just pull this scrolling chiron down and go back over here. 
and go into the chat and post the link to Cornerstone Housing for Women for those of us who would like to, uh, for those watching or listening, if you're listening, Cornerstone, uh, cornerstonewomen.ca, and then you can go to their donation page once you're on their, their webpage, and you can donate. Um, tomorrow is Friday, yes, Ree. Um, if you donate, please just, uh, you can put either True North Eager Beaver or my name, it doesn't matter, just so we know, uh, and send us a, a snapshot if you could, just so we know, because I think, and I, 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 I can't confirm this, I might have to reach out to Cornerstone to get some numbers from them, but I think yeah. we've raised about $2,000. Oh, that I would think. be wonderful. I could be wrong. It, it might even be more. I don't know. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, we is don't know. Not because I, the receipts. That's right. And, and at my office, I posted it, and it's been seen by 1,200 people. Wow. And I've gotten a lot of comments from people who are like, we're going to donate. We're going to donate. So I don't know because I haven't – all I did was just post it. I didn't ask them to, to you know, put the donation in my name or anything like that uh, because, at, at, you know, I was – and I was cautious about – promoting you know i don't want to promote this in my place of work i like to keep them compartmentalized right mm -hmm. although that being said there are many people who i work with who know full well about our brand our media company and what we do and say but i still you know you keep yep, you yep. keep them separate yep. um so I, I have no idea how much money's been raised through uh, my, my place of employment but I'm, I'm hoping it's a good amount yeah uh, me too. and you know, and, and like I said, you know, I, I started with the hundred dollar figure, but it's like literally sixty two dollars is, is what works for one day. So if you can donate as little as sixty two, if you can donate twenty dollars, if you only got five, whatever you can donate is good mm -hmm. because Every it job helps it, that's to the pot. That's right. It helps people in need. And again, there are a thousand women a year that become homeless in Ottawa. Which is, uh, and, and trust me when I say this, when these women become homeless, it is not like a guy becoming homeless. It usually has, oftentimes has domestic violence involved, uh, abuse, uh, you name it. So, yep. yeah, this, yep. it's, it's a, a, a charity that's near and dear to my heart. They're in my community. They were horribly affected by the pandemic and by the occupation. And a fire. And a fire immediately after they reopened. It's like, ah, talk about having a rough year. And this, this yeah. is a good organization. And, and I, there's a lot of friends of mine that I've spoken to have said point blank, oh, that's the one I give too frequently. I've worked with them many times. They're good people. They do good work. So that's my charity of choice. There you go. All right. Uh, kids, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Podcast. We hope you loved listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. Please let your peeps and poops know about us because democracy is something that you do. Um, please, please, please donate to Cornerstone Housing for Women or the Red Cross or um, write a letter. Let people know you still have some things that are bothering you and you want to see some changes. You're the boss. Write your employee an evaluation letter. If you really like this podcast, you can find us on the Cryer Media Network as well as all Beaver Grizzly friendly platforms. And if your platform is not Beaver Grizzly friendly, why the hell not? And why you want it? Stars and reviews are appreciated. Please, please, please be generous. And we'd love to hear from you. So please reach us on our Facebook at True North Eager Beaver, our Twitter feed at True Eager, or by email at True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com, or leave a comment on our uh. YouTube page. And we had a lovely comment uh, the other day from someone who is very happy that we were back. So oh, yes, thank you yeah. so much for tuning in. Yes. Oh, you and, can subscribe. And, <clears throat> sorry. Yes. When I have a moment. Sorry. Oh my goodness. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. You can subscribe to us via our pod page, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, all in lowercase letters, uh, with a hyphen between each one of those words. And I'm sure Mr. Grizzly will make uh, the little QR code appear on the bottom of the screen for that. And if you happen to be watching on our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube channel, why not make like Kit Elaine and smash those buttons, particularly the subscribe button? That helps us out big time. And we thank you. Absolutely. And if you happen to be listening on podcast and don't really venture off to YouTube, when you have an opportunity, if you could just go by the site and click subscribe, that would help us out too. That would be um, great. Yeah, we can't do this without your kind and generous support. So if you feel we've done a particularly good show or we've been having a particularly good week for you, uh, please scan the QR code right by Mr. Grizzly's head. That will bring you to our emergency hydration fund where we hire staff called coffee and hot chocolate and uh, 
Caesar and Guinness, and sometimes a few gluten-free farm boy chocolate chip ice cream cookies. Just saying. Just saying. Cookie sandwiches. Cookie sandwiches, of course. Because you got two cookies. Because if it's just, you don't want an ice cream open face sandwich. <laughs> you got to have a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, when I have a chance, uh, I haven't had the opportunity yet, but uh, for those folks who missed uh, the five shows last week when we weren't on YouTube, uh, I do, uh, we have them saved. I have downloaded all of them and I will post them to YouTube uh, once I have a chance, it's a it's a bit of work to do it, and I haven't had the, the, the spare time to do it. But I will get those posted by the weekend. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you missed us uh, last week when we were um, barred from broadcasting because of, uh, well, <laughs> will we put we'll them up for shows. broadcasts over the weekend? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Um, uh, just so you know, uh, the interview with uh, Jason Carmen also didn't. Uh, the re we got to I know, and I've, I've tried. Happened. I've not been able to do it. Oh, okay. like, I, I've tried to. It won't let me do it for some reason. There you go. Oh, boy. Yeah. All right. Um, and if you are listening, then you can go to our coffee fund. That's ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver. One word, lowercase letters. And that's where you can make your donation. Every donation is very much appropriate. Is very much appropriated. Appreciated. <laughs> also appropriated and put back into the show. <laughs> <laughs> nice save yes woke cookies indeed please send them <laughs> I, I i eat cookies i'm not picky woke cookies chocolate chip cookies oatmeal raisin cookies just just hand over the cookies <laughs> nobody gets hurt <laughs> from the beaver cookies. lodge <laughs> this is your eager weaver saying until next time dear kids it could be a tough world out there so please be kind to and gentle with yourself mr grizzly do you have some words of wisdom for us before we go you sp spoke of cookies, made me think of Cookie Monster and Cookie Monster saying, me will have an excellent day. And if Ooh. day goes bad, me will eat cookie. Yes. And it will be good day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Or in the words of Barney, uh, Barney, uh, oh shoot, not Stinson's, no, uh, Barney from uh, How I Met Your Mother. Okay. If I'm having a bad day, I just be awesome instead. And then my day is better. <laughs> ah, there you go. Mr. Grizzly, please roll them credits. Okay, I just have to find them first. There they are. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. See, we have Kit Dan that's uh, doing the Cookie Monster song. Cookie, 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 start with C. You know what else starts with C? Mr. Grizzly, cookout, if you will. One of our sponsors, the Pepper Master, has a special for you kits. Their special Father's Day kit. It has uh, the premium old school jerk cooking sauce, some Hurricane Category 6 premium so uh, uh, dipping Pepper. sauce here, some steak spice. Um, what else? Uh, peach, uh, maple, maple, bacon, bacon sauce. sauce. Oh, lots of lots of good stuff uh, in this uh, little thing. Um, normally two hundred and eighty dollars. The folks at the Pepper Master are putting it on sale for a hundred. So if you go to peppermaster.com slash product slash fathers hyphen day hyphen kit hyphen twenty twenty three, there's a link put in there in the chat. Uh, if you're looking for a Father's Day gift, try that. It's and, and 
we have we've we've sampled some of the sauces. It's uh, some damn really good stuff. Well, I, I, I sampled a whole bunch of it on Sunday morning. Uh, Mr. Yes. Beaver cooking bacon breakfast. Uh, had some uh, some bacon madness on my eggs. It was very good. Mm. So yeah. I had I, I had bacon eggs, rye toast, and I had uh, maple bacon flavored hot sauce on my eggs. Magnificent. And he likes the spicy on his eggs. I like the spicy on my eggs. He said it. <laughs> All right, kids. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow with see our ya. old pal Jake. <laughs>